Well, hey there. Good morning. This is Pastor Dan with First Lines Church, and it's good to be with you today. I am coming to you live from my house, and I'm over here next to my Christmas tree, and we have decorations from uh, some years and other years, and some of the ones you've given us are here. And today I am reflective on how Christmas has come. And I'm going to slide in here a little bit more. You see behind me here, uh, we have a beautiful selection of our favorite nativity scenes. And each one means a little different. Now it all has the same theme, which is the theme that Jesus came and that he is the sign of God's great love for our world, but he came for each of us individually. And uh, they all have special meaning. This one here came from Ed and Patty Blanchard a couple years ago. Uh, I, we always put names on. This was in 2014 from Ben, our son. This was from Darren and Henrietta Sanford. Uh, we got a card from John and Carolyn Garris. And then uh, this was from the Tuckers. And they all have special meaning. These here three, which have these fancy lights that look so beautiful. They uh, were from our ladies with uh, crafting. And uh, so it, it, they're just beautiful reminders about how Jesus came. This coming Sunday, which is Christmas Sunday, is a beautiful time for worship. And I'm reminded that Jesus came to be worshiped. The angels announced to the shepherds that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. And they went and they bowed, bowing down as a sign of worship. When the Magi showed up sometime later, which is recorded in Matthew 2, we read that they came, and when they talked with King Herod, King Herod said, what is this? And they said, well, we have seen this star in the east, and we have come to find the king of the Jews. We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. This coming Sunday, we're going to talk about how wise men worship. And wise men worship Jesus. And these wise men, they came and they worshiped Jesus. Now, this bothered King Herod because he wanted to retain power. And you can't want to retain power and worship. Because worship is vulnerable. Worship is humbling. Worship is acknowledging that we have this need to have someone else's assistance. It's recognizing the power of someone else instead of our own power. And these wise magi, wise men from the East, came because they saw his star and come to worship. And Herod, Herod didn't know where he was born, was going to be born. So he called all the wise men in Jerusalem together, the Jewish leaders, the Sanhedrin, maybe the Pharisees or Sadducees. They came together and they said, well, what we see is that out of Bethlehem, Bethlehem is where he's going to be born. And we know that from Micah 5. And the text says, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherd of my people Israel. And they went to Bethlehem, and they found him, and they rejoiced, overjoyed, verse 10. Coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him, and then... They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, incense, and myrrh. Now, I don't know how many of y'all are given gold, incense, or myrrh, but that sounds like a pretty beautiful gift. It's going to smell up the house. It's going to be bright and shiny. It's going to be worth a lot of money. But they gave this king a beautiful gift, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And it's believed that perhaps these gifts financed Jesus' family trip. Because they had to flee to Egypt, you remember. But they bowed down and worshipped him. That's the end of verse 11. They bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures, presented him with gifts. And then they were warned in a dream not to go back the same way and talk to Herod. You know, this Christmas is a beautiful time to worship. To pause in the franticness of our day, the challenges of our lives, the hardship of our story... And remember that perhaps God is not finished with us yet. Perhaps Jesus 
is the sign that you need to find and worship this Christmas season. Because Jesus really does change everything. He changes our hearts. He changes our outlook. He changes our feelings. He affects our relationships. And in fact, he tells us that he loves us more than anything in all the world. And that God loves us too. This Christmas, Merry Christmas from my family to yours, from our home to yours. I trust God will richly bless you as you experiment with what it means to worship this Christmas at your house. I'll see you on Sunday. Marsha and I will be there. First Line Church is a great place to be. Merry Christmas and God bless.